here we have another teacher training video it's the content that I wanted to cover on the 31st of October I just like to go over the process of setting a task for the learners showing you how to access all the different areas of purple mash just to help you to know your way around it you go over here you see you've got a whole range of different things that are available you can get the scores of the learners if you go into the teacher section you've got this the resource sharing section and this is where you can download or upload information that is useful or activities so if you saw I typed in fractions and here we go to let's choose this one uh, comparing fractions in a spreadsheet and there you have the resource all you need to do is then click on it set it to do you can even directly set it for the children and you've got a QR code and you can even bookmark this I haven't really tried out bookmarking but it's available you're gonna have to experiment and see how to use this but there's quite a bit here that is useful for teachers I'm just gonna open this resource so you can have a good look at what it looks like and you can see it's a spreadsheet and we've got the fractions which can have the equivalent decimal and there's a whole lot of different interesting things here's where you would save your file if you find it useful this probably could be used as a worksheet you just need to print it out you've got chart I'm just gonna exit it but you can see it's all found here in that resource section you can see even the QR code at the bottom teacher section is where it's found and if you look over here you've got the South African curriculum a teacher's plan has been built around the CAPS document using Purple Mash in the South African curriculum you've got all the learning areas as well I would suggest that teachers explore this more fully I'm just going to download this document so go over there download it and I put it onto my computer I'm just going to scroll down to a relevant section so there's term 3 just get down here to term 4 and there you can see the links on the right hand side we're in term 4 and if I scroll down here's week 5 and 6 of term 4 and I see that this language structures and conventions section you must just see my last video because that's where I touch a little bit on this so if you see week 4 and 5 I've done a bit on language structures and conventions it's all part of the curriculum everything you see is part of the curriculum and that's what I've selected is in my last video and now we're looking at week five and six I'd just like to show you how to just follow one of these hyperlinks so we're just going to click on it click on the second one if I click that it should open up the resource and you can see it's all li linked up to publishing and obviously one of these would be suitable for week five and six English in grade four one must just understand that we're talking about tools here and resources they're not necessarily full activities they just give you some sort of template to work from so if you click on one of them it'll open up and you'll be able to build an activity around it it's still pretty general but it does give a teacher a whole lot of useful things to do you can launch the app and have a good look at it and see whether it suits your particular needs and here you've got a newspaper headline a newspaper front page and you can make changes make it just suit your own particular needs in grade 4 you find that they would be doing adverts in week 5 and 6 and so this would definitely be useful here you can see I'm going into teacher mode where you can make certain adjustments before you give a project to the class you can bring in a whole lot of different things so let's have a good look at it you'd fill all this in to just help the children guide them through the process of doing the project so it's the guidelines on how the project would be done I'm going to just assume that there's some art exhibition at the school so I'm going to take out what's written here the school art exhibition and this could be a project where the children have to write about the different artists and promote an art exhibition at the school and then I'd go with choose I could now save this does your project have a word bin you would be able to find a whole list of words that the children could use that will be feeding into the project if you wanted to choose one of these options these would be the clip art available for the project I'll just click at any any one of them fairy tales does the project have a checklist 
that would be a whole lot of uh, items on a checklist that would assist the children when they do it to ensure that they've got everything covered. So it's pretty comprehensive. There's a lot of things here of interest. And you can see, you can define how many pages it is. And you just got to set all of this up for the children. Yeah, you can see if you open up the project, you've got the checklist. You can make adjustments to that to suit your own needs. Here I'm going to change the title. Have you placed uh, an appropriate header or heading? And then we could just type something in over here. And that would also be a tool tip to make your heading. You could think of something that captivates the audience, grasp or grab the attention of the reader. So we want a header that is effective and it grabs the attention, as in newspapers. And here you've got all the clip art, and you remember I put in fairy tales, so there you've got the, wool, the, the bear that probably came with Goldilocks, and all of that is available in the fairy tale clip art section. But you'll have to define that or customize it. And then afterwards you just save it. Here you could bring in other items and equip the you go into the teacher sections, the activated, and the purple mesh video that you can look at gives you more information. Save and exit. You save it as you normally would in your normal computerized system, and you just give it an appropriate name, and then grade four, adverts, and advertisements, and we'll go with save. And saved it in my default file. And there's a whole lot of stuff that one can use over here. If you go to work folder, you'll see here's the activity, the one we had, the newspaper front page, and we can open it. And here you've got the checklist and everything is shown. And we could we could just place this as an activity for the learners. So very useful, lots of stuff. And it's great stuff. I'm just going to exit it for the moment. But if you wanted to give it as a to-do, you'd click there on set to do. And here I'm going to write in a description, create an advertisement, and remember it was about the art exhibi exhibition, so on promoting the school art exhibition. And probably one could touch on the different artists, and I'll even record something here. Make a poster that shows and promotes the art exhibition at our school. Try and make it colorful and interesting with lots and lots of interesting write-ups. And that's encoding the audio, placing it onto the learner's profile. The learner will be able to access this audio by that. And you can also set a date, you can, the date that they would start on this activity and the date that the activity would be expected to be finished. Go to next, and now you can assign it to a particular class. So I'm going to look for which class I'd like to give this work to. Um, let's have a good look. Which class should I pass this on? It's a grade 4 activity. I did look at the grade 4 curriculum. So let's just give it to an individual learner. And you can see I've placed it over there with that tick. And that would indicate that this particular child has got the work to do. I'm not going to give it to the child I'm just going to show you that that's the way to do it. I still want to show you how an activity is shown by in the learner section, so let's go through that. If you go to the to-dos over here, you'll see all what I've got in my to-dos are shown in green. And that's indicating that the learners have already done this work and there's nothing showing what is current. So had it been blue, that would have indicated the work is, is, being, is there to be done. So I'm going to set some work that I do want the learners to do. It's a grade 7 activity on machine learning. And I'm going to just give it to them once again as revision. Complete this activity once again as they have done it before. And that was the last video on Rewordify. Try to get the highest possible score. Because as they go through this, they will be given a score. I'll give them a one a, a date. They can do it for today because they're actually seeing me today, and that would be 
well, let's go with that. Okay, so we've got classes, and we're going to scroll down to the classes, and we're going to assign it to the grade sevens, and set to do, and close this, and you will see, I'll show you now how we can see that activity in the learner section, or the learners, ready for the learners to do. I just wanted to show you how to get into the game section and change some of the settings in the games. You find very often teachers play the game and they say it's not appropriate for their particular learner's level and it can be adjusted to suit your particular needs. So you go to, in this particular instance we've got Sequence Snake and we're already seeing that the game's playing and the important part is to press this button over here which shows the teacher so if you press that button you can pause with the P and I'll just show you again but if you click over there you can see these are the settings that you can make for your class so the first level I'm going to show you there's a table here and you can click on any of the cells of that table and make adjustments to the numbers that feed into the sequence snake. So there I've got from 20 to 20. 20 is the top number. That's the top number you can work with in this particular game. So there's 20. I'm just changing a whole lot of these settings so that you can see how it's done. But I think you can understand it's just a matter of taking the trouble to change the levels and try to accommodate your class. If you're a grade 7 maths teacher, you're obviously going to need to work with bigger numbers, more difficult numbers, compared to the numbers for a grade 1 teacher. Okay, I think that's as far as I wanted to go on this one, but just trying to change a few of the others. And you can even see there's two levels over here, the 7 and 8, 8th level have not yet been filled in, so that can be included. You can expand the game and bring in a 7 and 8 level. Oh, pretty cool. So see the top number that one can add in this is 20. I'm not going to go too far into this. I'll enter the game just very very briefly so you can see that's basically what it's about. And You've got certain numbers that have to add up or you have to hit certain numbers that bond with that number. Here you can see all the game sections, there's a whole range of different games. Each one of those has that possibility that you can go and customize it for your needs. So we're back now in the home section. It's right in the beginning. This is where we enter Purple Mash. I would just like to take the trouble to thank you for watching this video and to also ask you to become more actively involved in exploring what Purple Mash can provide to you. You'll find it's got so many wonderful tools and it will definitely enrich the whole learning and educational experience. And do look into the curriculum based aspects because that will feed into your classroom teaching very well. Thank you.